Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason here, joined today by the Colonel. Thanks for joining. Mm, thanks for having me. Uh, some people that follow the channel may know that I recently reviewed your new record called Listen to the Blood. I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. I thought it was excellent. And I swear to God that it's not some sort of like, uh, I'll review the record and, and say it's great if you come on the channel type of thing. I truly legitimately loved it. Um, and thanks to Dylan CV for bringing you on. He kind of connected us. Yeah. Awesome. I'm so happy you like it and shout out to Dylan. Love some Dylan. Did you, did you see that review that I made? Did you watch the video? He sent it to me. Yeah, actually. Uh, yeah, it was great. Um, so yeah. there's not a ton of information. A, a lot of what I could like put together for that video and that review was kind of gathered from just reading like your bio and looking at your band camp and, and a couple of little articles that I found. But there seems to be like kind of like this mystique around you almost. Maybe it's part partially the name and, and having like the alter ego almost kernel. Um, but one thing I read about you is uh your dad charlie garner played bass for dal reeves is that correct right mm -hmm. i think you said that this is kind of like the end of a three album arc kind of like working through some of the issues with your dad passing and proving yourself worthy of being part of this kind of country lineage can you speak to that at all or is that was that sort of the yeah that was sort of the genesis of the project really um but you know it, it it grew pretty quickly and developed from there um I, I maybe have spoken a little bit too much about that uh or it has you know it's been maybe recorded a bit too much that um <clears throat> that was sort of the whole project but i think any kind of creative thing there's a reason that you stand before the canvas or you know you pick up that guitar there's a reason you go to that place you know and um you know some painful type of things I think inspire a lot of people to to go and, and be there and you know what grows from that point is sort of um you know sort of the the aliveness of the of the the act of trying to make something and so from there it stemmed out in, into to being a whole a whole different thing but yeah the genesis of it was um you know I have a friend named G.R. Robinson who do you know the band Water Liars at all I don't know you should check that band out it's a great band um but he had a project that he told me about one time called Funerale. It was a band that he that he had that he started this band at, right after his dad had died, and that was probably three or four years before, maybe even longer than that before I started this. When he told me about that, and it was just always kind of in my head, you know. When my dad died, it kind of became a, a you know, the thing that put me before the canvas, you know. But interesting, cool. So I also read that you kind of plan to bury the suit that you wear. Is that going to happen? Has it already happened? No, it hasn't happened. Um, and, you know, you speak about the mystique part of it. <clears throat> I think I started this project right before the whole social media thing, like probably 2010 is when I started thinking about this. Um, way before, you know, basically having a music career meant you know, tending, you know, gardening your Instagram account every day and making sure you're doing it the right way so that you have your best foot forward. So, I mean, the farther we've gone into now, it's like everyone wants to know everything. They want to know what color socks you wear every day, which I get that, you know, it's like I've scoured the internet for David Bowie interviews and things. Like, I mean, and all the people that I love and, you know, tried to find the most unique uh, thing where they said something that no one else knew about and so I get that impulse but a lot of this project was yeah it, it had more to do with the project and it had to do with me trying to say hey here's my full name here's my date of birth you know here's my driver's license number my name is Joe Joseph uh, here we go it didn't have really anything to do with that um, so uh, so yeah, it's kind of had a weird collision, I think, with the social media stuff as it's progressed. So there's a bit of, bit of a mixed narrative, like, are you trying to be secretive or are you trying not to? And it's just sort of inevitable. I think that people, you know, unless you're like, I love this, uh, this uh, guy named Burial. Do you know this guy? It's like a kind of a yeah. dubstep dude. Mm -hmm. I love the way, like, I started making this music around when I was really into him. And, and uh, I loved it. Like no one knew who he was, but, you know, it's like now people do, but 
uh, I, I just thought that was cool, but he had a persona and, and, and stuff. So, so it's a mixed bag, you know, do you think the next record will still be a kernel record? Are you going to keep the name and keep, keep moving with that? I have or no idea. Not that far yet. <laughs> I have no idea. You're on single lock records, which is a record founded by Ben Tanner. Uh, yeah. He's one of, one of the, yeah. One of the founders of, of the label, keyboard yeah. player for, uh, Alabama shakes and you got to record the record at uh fame studios. Is that where, where uh, it was done we, or were you at his own place or. Yeah. Single like has a studio, um, there in Florence. And, uh, we made the first, we made light country, uh, in one studio, like their first building. It was like the offices were downstairs and they had the studio up top and some studio stuff downstairs too. We did light country there, but since then that's just become offices and they've annexed the property adjacent uh to that building and now that whole building is a, a an amazing studio that's kind of like ben's playhouse and um it's amazing um yeah great great stuff cooking down there for sure love love those guys so he's like the basically like the house producer for the label it seems yeah he's kind of the the studio is kind of his realm uh, you know they all kind of have different responsibilities and they just split it up and and uh, make it make it go you know how was it that you came to be part of that? Was there like a moment where you were like discovered by them or, or were they people that you already knew from, from before? No, it's kind of funny. I met uh, Ben on tour when I was playing bass uh, in a different band and we were opening for the Alabama Shakes. And I was trying to find an NBA finals uh, or a playoff game. And uh, this is 2013. Um, and so I found myself in this room with a big screen TV. I finally get to this back room and there's only one person sitting there on like all this leather furniture. It's Ben Tanner because he's a big sports fan or basketball fan, whatever. So I just sat down and we just started, Hey, I'm Joe. Hey, I'm Ben, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we started just talking trash to each other about the ball game. Cause he was pulling for the heat and I'm like, come on, man, don't pull for the heat. And uh, so we just kind of became friends through that tour, you know, and just met on the road. And it kind of stemmed from there. And uh, that was around the time they were starting the label. So they were just kind of starting to talk about bands. And I said, well, I got this thing I do on the side. And he said, send me some demos. And so I sent him over and he said, let's do a record. I said, cool. That sounds great. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a while since uh, Light Country. Was, was most of the material kind of conceived pre-pandemic or is this newer material that you wrote during like is, is this a pandemic record at all or is this just kind of like in songs? terms of the actual songs that came like when they came out and stuff yeah there were a couple of the songs on the record that i had before for sure and uh some that weren't really polished off you know and then there's an aspect there's a couple that uh, that i did sort of yeah during that time most of it was done during the pandemic time but i, I had I had written a few of the songs so but everything kind of morphed into that zone you know especially as we were recording things and and, and all that so because you know it's like we started recording um a couple of years back but by the time you get to the final mixing stuff um you know because it was supposed to be out the summer of last year i think it could have been the year before i don't even remember so a lot of it, you know, we recorded, started mixing it, and it just sat, kind of sat dormant there for a while um, during the pandemic. And mm -hmm. uh, then we finally, you know, found time to, to get back to work on it and finish it up and, and stuff. So, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a both situation, you know. Is it pretty much a all tracked live? It sounds like it. Mm hmm. Yeah, the, for the most part. I mean, there there was one track I did everything myself except for like some little sax buried saxophone um, song called "The Limit." Um, but everything else, yeah, we live tracked it and and uh, you know did did some stuff in post, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's I mean, you know, with this record, with this uh, project, it's so much about four guys or four people just getting up on a stage, plugging in and and just singing for an hour, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's where all the music comes from. It's all kind of meant to be experienced in that space. And so to me, recording it, you know, um, uh, it's more, I guess, um, it's just more true to what the project is. It would be fun to, you know, do some Build-A-Bear recordings with some of those songs, but 
and which is what we did with that uh the song uh, the limit but um but yeah it's fun to record with other folks and just get in the studio you know and mess around so you already kind of answered mentioning bowie and burial one of my other questions was was are you like a live and breathe country music guy but you seem to have much more diverse taste than that um are there like any certain records that were like at the forefront of your mind when making this record or is it just kind of the result of everything that you listen to i mean there are definitely reference points along the way um especially just song to song um like with a song like you do you uh it was like all that christopherson stephen bruton recordings like border lord um you know those that like that song sonically like um getting by high and strange a song like that was a um or like uh jerry reed's cover of um uh Folsom prison uh blues uh there's like a crazy guitar solo on that song and it's just he, i mean he was one of my favorite musicians ever jerry reed but um the solo on that song is just bananas and so there are definitely reference points you know that come up for every song especially when you're when you're mixing it's like well what should this this, this can sound like any color uh on the spectrum you know what color do you want it to be <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of what's fun about recording and also you know it really makes you commit to things and and uh which is which is fun too because you end up committing on the fly you know in sort of in the moment um so you kind of get what you get in, in those moments and you record those moments and then that's what everyone gets to hear is your interpretation of the song but there are really a thousand different ways to interpret every song um and um so yeah that's just it's kind of what's fun about recording you kind of record that time that you're there and doing that with those people and that time that they're living in at, at the same moment um so it's kind of a bonding thing uh, right, yeah. especially with people that you travel with which, which which this band was a tour band you know so yeah, yeah it, sound, it sounds like the musicians on the record feel very natural playing together it's like the chemistry is there i think on the record which makes a, a big difference yeah it's it's cool to hear it that that would come through or could potentially come through because it's true um there is a rapport there it's not like hey steve i'm joe we're going to be recording some guitar today you know yeah yeah um but i, th I mean i you can't fake that and i think yeah it does come yeah. through yeah if nothing else i mean it's good to have that that aspect of, of things when you're recording so one of our co most common commenters on our channel her name's roxanne and she knows a ton of music and after my review of your record she brought up a record and i'm just curious if you have even heard it or are aware of it she's she compared your record to a 1972 record by skip batten called skip I don't no know i don't know, you know that who skip batten is he was in the birds during kind of a weird period or like later period from like untitled he was in the birds for like three records has some solo records clarence white on guitar on this record um oh, sweet man it's gonna be good then <laughs> she said that uh you came closer to his record skip than anyone else so well if i'd heard it you know i probably would never have started never would have written any of these songs and just put a banker yeah, yeah. or something you know so thank uh, God high, high praise from her well that's very cool is she the one that said that i had some stuff that sounded like bad arlo guthrie that's that possible she may have also said that i don't know that could have been someone else i was like well played uh, <laughs> well that's cool yeah no i have to check that out i'm not familiar with that record the last thing i just want to talk briefly about is is your thoughts on just the state of country music in general and i'm wondering if you find it challenging to even convince fans that aren't just like pure country fans to give your music a shot because i feel like certain <laughs> certain subgenres of country music have kind of permeated uh mainstream music so much that people don't even realize what country music is anymore well it's it's it's, it's kind of like what is country music you know <laughs> um yeah. he has two different people you get two different answers he has 100 different people you're going to get more than two you know um and plus, it's like, I don't really think about that ever. I don't really think about, you know, it's almost like that's a good question for not that it's a bad question. It's just I, I don't ever think about it. But someone who may be someone like you, um, who is kind of 
looking, you've got your eyes out for music and how this compares to that. And you kind of have, uh, you know, a, a base from which to pull, you know, that kind of information. I don't necessarily do that. I, I kind of just do what I do for my reasons. And I think that's, you know, I, I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to do everything, but I, I would tend to listen to someone who's more doing something like that. The people that I've always been drawn to musically or people who were doing that rather than going, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them going to make a statement about, you know, the genres of music um, and what's true about, I mean, a lot of people do that with country, you know, real country, not real country, but, sure. um, but you know, country is, um, I, I think that there's a whole podcast right there. You could talk about what, what is country? Yeah. Because to me, it just, it just sets off. It sets my mind off on, 15 different dirt roads and which directions they go. And that's a whole hour podcast right there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, it's nice when people like what you do and, um, but you know, what I'm doing doesn't really have any bearing, you know, or people listening to it doesn't have any bearing really on what I'm doing. It'd be nice if a million people a day gave me a dollar, you know, but yeah. you know, if they don't, is it going to change what I'm doing? No, it's not. It's, um, so you kind of have to suffer and, and, and succeed along with the project, whatever it's doing, but at least from the perspective of where I'm coming from, you know, now when I'm done with this, maybe I'll, you know, start writing, trying to get in there and write some Nashville pop country stuff. So if you're listening out there and you've had a number one hit, you just send me an email and we'll get to talking. So. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Hopefully some more people will check out, the record if they haven't already from the first review well man I, listen i really i really appreciate you uh, doing the review and it's always scary when someone says hey check this out someone wrote about wrote, wrote something it's like yeah. okay take a deep breath what's this going to be like you know uh it was really really refreshing to hear you talk about it and feel like you really understand like you know what what i'm doing and where i'm coming from and and to hear you speak positively about it was 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 really great and and thanks for doing what you do um you know because i think it does take people out there you know saying hey i like this listen to this to even make the whole thing work i mean it's all just hanging by very thin thread at the moment you know yeah. so it, it's incredibly helpful what you're doing and 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 you know so i hope you're aware of that you know uh, when you're doing thank you for saying that that's doing cool. this kind of stuff you're, you're you're increasing the possibility that this music can continue and and um and, and it helps a lot thanks for saying that that's that's awesome uh yeah good songs good playing what more do you need i mean killing it <laughs> well thanks man i appreciate it sure do all right everybody hit the like button subscribe all that good stuff uh, facebook twitter instagram patreon merch all in the description thanks again to the colonel we'll see you in the next one